Hi, this is Melody and I'm here at Kingdom Sewing in Simi Valley and today we are showing our February kit for our Kimberbell Club and it is this absolutely darling little cinch bag that looks like a bunny rabbit so that you can make a bunch of these for Easter for all of your friends and family, your little kiddos and it can hold candy or it can hold matchbox cars or if you're giving it away to friends that so maybe um, even a flash card in there would be really cute for them so it just cinches down and we just I like to tie the little bow in the back just like that and he is ready to be set on the table in front of your Easter dinner plates. This one here, we changed it up and we made the front and the ears out of the same fabric and we put a different fabric on the back. This one, we made the bunny ears white and we put the front and the back in the same fabric so you can change it up any way you like and which way we're doing we're doing we are going the... to actually do it this way today and what you get in your kit is you get three pieces of material that have all been cut five and a half inches wide by ten and a half inches long so you get two pieces of this very pretty lavender fabric with little gold specks and a white fabric with little daisies on it. When you get your fabric and you've pressed it, you oh, I'm sorry, you also get two pieces of ribbon that are 16 inches long. So I'm just going to set my ribbon aside over to here. I'm going to set my little bunnies over here so they're not in our way. And what I'd like you to do is take a piece of painter's tape and put A on your first piece of lavender fabric, B on your second piece of lavender fabric, and C on your third piece of lavender fabric because the fabrics guides on our instruction sheets get a little a little um, disconcerting trying to figure out which fabric they were actually talking about. So I have loaded my Altair. Today we're, we're going to be working on the Altair and because the month of February is our embroidery month, we have the Altair on sale for seven thousand nine hundred ninety nine dollars plus you get your choice of one of the dime monster hoops so this particular machine will actually use the nine and a quarter by 14 inch hoop so you can get the largest or you can go down all the way to a four by four or a five by seven hoop so it's your choice which size magnetic hoop you'd like to have come with your Altair. I have already hooped a piece of no-show mesh stabilizer in my 5x7 hoop. So I'm going to go ahead. I have white bobbin thread in the bobbin. And so that it shows up on the camera. I am going to um, hoop some lavender thread. So let me just hey Tim, can you get my little thingy out of here? I can't. Wait, get this out. One of those sticks you have there for your... Oh, look at that. Let's try that. And that, it worked perfectly. Thank you for reminding me of that. 
Okay, so we're just going to put this on here. Okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and The Altair is both a sewing and an embroidery machine. So this unit comes off and you can use it for sewing. So it's a wonderful machine. And this is the replacement to the Destiny. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have my embroidery design up here on my screen. I'm just going to go ahead and press embroidery. And it is going to sew, if you're going to go along with me with the instructions that Gina sent out. We are now on step two. So I'm just gonna set it right here so that we can reference our instructions. So the first thing we're going to do is put our foot down and we're gonna go ahead and we are going to sew the cut line that is step two machine step one and I have done it in purple so that you can see it here on my no-show mesh now on step three it actually tells us to remove our hoop from the machine and cut the line that we just sewed but I'm asking you to wait to do that until step 11 because then we won't have damaged the integrity of our stabilizer and there's no reason to do it at this step. So we're going to go ahead and put our foot down and we are going to sew placement line which is machine step two and step four in our instruction sheet. I'm going to pick up fabric A, and before I went on camera, I actually folded my fabric in half and just did a quick little press line so I knew where the center is. So I'm going to take my A and just put it over here because you can reuse your painter's tape over and over again. And I'm just going to lay my fabric so that my press line is just barely above the cut line and I'm going to just set it over the top just like that making sure that there's enough fabric on both sides and it goes fabric over the bottom and it is going to sew my tack down line and then it's going to sh it it's going to sew a basting stitch right below where my casing is going to be for our ribbon to go through. Hopefully that purple shows up. And notice the next stitch is actually a basting stitch. It's a long stitch. And that was instruction number six on your instruction page. We are now moving over to instruction number seven. So I'm going to change my thread from our purple. Over to black. And Tim, did you know that if you have Floriani thread and you've, you've wound your own spools of bobbin thread to match your Floriani thread, that you can actually drop them in the bottom of your, your spool and just put like a piece of tape and now you've got your bobbin and your thread together so you don't have to remember which color no, goes with what. No, I did not what. know that. Isn't that kind of a cool thing? Yeah. 
Okay, so I'm just going to pull my bobbin thread. I mean, I'm going to leave my bobbin thread as white, but I'm going to put black for the bunny's whiskers, his eyes, and the little line that is below his bunny nose. Okay. Now, while this is sewing, Tim, if you'd like to um, zoom in on our Kimberbell wall, because this month is, um, is our Embroidery Expo month, it's National Embroidery Month, we have all of our sewing notions and our, our Kimberbell wall and other designs on 15% off. And we have an online code for that, that percentage off. So it's X is in X-ray, 9, R is in Robert, N is in Nancy, and the number 2. So you can just go online, um, order whatever you'd like, and put in that code and get 15% off. Along with our spools of thread, they're still on our regular, isn't it, buy two? Buy on the uh, Floriani embroidery thread, you buy three, you get the fourth one free. Which is wonderful if you're trying to create a thread library for yourself. Design. It only takes about 11 minutes to actually embroider off and probably from start to finish it's maybe a half an hour of time if you've got your fabric already prepared and ready to go. This is the last little stitch out for the black. And then I thought we would go with this cute little uh, raspberry pink for the nose. <clears throat> and like all of you know, with any of our computerized machines, you should cut your thread at the top and pull it through. Or you can go backwards as long as you unwrap it and you just don't tug it back through. So we're just going to change our thread. <clears throat> as a mechanic, I'd always pull the thread through the needle. Um, the flow of how the thread is designed is not backwards at any time. Oh, okay. And really it's only about a foot of thread. It's in the grand scheme of things, it's much cheaper than having to bring it into the mechanic to have it fixed. This is good. Okay, so this is that raspberry pink so that it pops off the lavender fabric. On the powder pink material over here, I used a bubblegum pink for the design. So something maybe just a shade or two darker than the fabric so that you can actually see the little nose.
Okay, Tim, we are now at step 10, and it's always a really good idea to read your instructions, take a highlighter pen, and highlight anything that um, you need to remember to do. So at this point, we're going to pull our hoop off the machine. We are not going to, oh, I apologize. We're gonna put that right back onto the machine. I apologize. We forgot to do the, um, right now if we look at our design, we are actually going to do the buttonholes for the casing. So I'm going to leave this in the raspberry pink. We could have changed this to a lavender if you didn't want the buttonholes. But I want, for the camera, I want it to actually show on camera. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to do our buttonholes. <clears throat> That's step nine on your instruction sheet and step six on your machine steps. Okay, we, this time we really are going to pull it off the machine, not out of the hoop. So I'm just going to pull my hoop off and we're just going to lay it here. And notice that at this point, let me just bring this here. It actually is going to tell us that we want to take a seam ripper and we want to open up our buttonholes and we want to take out that basting stitch that we had put in step one. So here's the tip of the day so that you don't accidentally go through the top of our buttonhole. I'm just going to take a straight pin and I'm going to just put a straight pin right there. And now I'm going to take my seam ripper. I'm going to set it in the hole, into the buttonhole, and then I'm going to go up. And notice that I can't get past my straight pin. So you don't have to worry that you've gone too far. So let's do that again. I'm gonna put my straight pin right at the top of the buttonhole and I'm going to take my seam ripper I'm going to put it right at the bottom of the buttonhole and then I'm going to going through both the fabric and my stabilizer and notice I cannot get past that pin so there you go and now I've got if I just like see I've got a nice hole in both sides Now I'm going to actually take out my basting stitch, which only takes a couple seconds because it was only a, a really quick basting stitch. And every so often, if you cut it, it will just pull out. And if you flip it over to the back, you'll notice that you just have one long line of bobbin thread that we're just going to pull out. Now you are at step 11, which is where I ask you to stop from the very beginning of this. And now we are going to cut, I'm going to move my fabric so that I don't cut through my fabric, but see that cut line right there? 
I'm just going to put in my scissors and I'm just going to cut right above that cut line. So let me just get that like that. And I'm just going to go just a tad bit past where my material goes. So now I'm going to, now if we flip it over, our instructions tell us to go ahead and slide our material through our cut line, flip it over to the back of our There we go. I've made it nice and neat. I'm going to take my Kimberbell tape. I'm just going to put a piece at the bottom. of the design like so and I'm going to flip it back over because it also tells us we're at step 12 we flipped it we've flipped our material through our slit and now it's telling us we've flipped our our hoop back over and it's asking us to take a long piece of Kimberbell tape and just tape up that hole again so I'm just going to go just like that and go right across so that our, our um, stabilizer is back to being stable. Okay, I'm going to take my pink off and I'm going to change it back to our lavender color. So let's go ahead and pull out our thread and, and you don't have to, I lost my little piece, there it is, okay. You don't have to change the thread here. You could have left it um, the darker pink. I just wanted my thread to um, match my fabric a little more than the, the pink. And so it's going to actually sew down our tack down for the front and the back. And then the next one it's going to do is it's going to sew our casing for our ribbon. So it's just going to sew right across here and it's going to do a bean stitch which is like two stitches forward and one stitch back. This is the top and bottom of the drawstring. Correct. For the front. For the back, it actually just goes through the um, two pieces material. There won't be a casing for it. I love this little material with the gold specks in it. It's so cute. All the kits uh, Angie makes for us. So um, thank you for Quilty Pleasures. And now what it's going to do, Tim, is it's just going to put this reference line at the top of your stabilizer. And that's just so that you know that your fabric is covering where it needs to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and at this point go ahead and sew that one as well. I am at step 15. Machine step nine. <clears throat> okay, so again it says bring your hoop off the material, I mean off the machine. Um, we are at step 16. Okay, 
So with the front of your hoop facing up, I'm going to pull off my tape again, but I'm not going to throw this away because we're going to use this in just a little bit. And it tells us that we are going to, let me just bring this up to the front. It tells us with the front of the hoop facing up, we're going to pick up fabric B. And we know it's fabric B because we marked it. And we are going to put fabric B face down on the fabric and we're going to make sure that it goes over our our reference line up here and it goes over the bottom of the bottom of the fabric but Kimberbell has us cut this material with a lot of fabric so you don't really have to worry but if you were um, cutting your own fabric and you want it to be less generous with your fabric um, just make sure that it covers this line up here by a good half inch and covers this line down here by a good half inch. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and we are going to put this back on our machine. And what this is doing is it is... I don't know why I'm having problems with this particular hoop today. What this is going to do is we've got our fabric face down and it's just going to cover up our little bunny face. This is going to be the inside of the bag when all is said and done. So we're going to go ahead and So we are at step 17 and machine sewing step 10. Okay, the hardest part of this is taking the hoop on and off the machine. Okay, but we are at the last basically step. We are now going to take this fabric, we are going to weave it through our little hole just like so and we are going to take a piece of our Kimberbell tape and we're going to just put it right there so what step is that okay this is step 18 we've brought it through through the hole and let me bring my paperwork over. And now we are at step 19. This is fabric B. And notice we've taped fabric B at the top. With the back of the hoop still up, we are now going to pick up our fabric C, which is this one. <clears throat> And we're going to make sure that you, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a right and wrong side of this fabric. And we're going to lay it face down, so wrong side up, on top of our fabric. This is the bottom of the hoop. This is the bottom of the hoop, and that's why I put these little markings. This is fabric B, back of hoop, fabric C, back of hoop just so that you can see that we're working on the back of the hoop right now. And we're going to go ahead and tape our white, in our case, our white piece of fabric, which will be our bunny ears, to the back of the fabric, um, back of the hoop. Okay, so now we're good. And then when we flip it back over again, Kimberbell tells us to take that long piece of tape that we set aside and tape it back down again, just to be on the safe side so that your embroidery foot doesn't get caught on the stabilizer. 
Okay, so just to go over everything, we have, this is fabric B face down. We slid it through the hole and now fabric B on this side is face up and our white fabric is face down. Okay, so we're going to slide this back on our machine. <clears throat> I'm going to pull that off the machine. And what it's going to do now, Tim, if you slide over here, it's actually going to actually sew around our bunny, leaving the bottom of the bunny open, and it's going to jump over the top of where our casing, where our ribbon is going to go. Okay? So we're going to go here. And notice it kind of went in a little right there. It's not actually sitting right on the original tack down line. Or It just jumped over the top of our buttonholes. And now it's making our little bunny ears. It's just retracing uh, its steps just so that it has a nice firm um, sew line because you know we're going to probably give this to our little kiddos and they're going to be opening and closing that cinch bag. Um, this particular design for um, this month's project comes in two sizes. Comes in the five by seven, which is what we're doing. It also comes in a four by four, which is a very small little bunny. Um, but if you like this particular type of project, we have several um, several kits on the wall or several embroidery packs on the wall. One of them is called the Woodland Creatures, I believe, and it has a bunny rabbit a fox, Gina. a raccoon, um, and some other little guys. Not only does it go down to the four by four inch design, but it goes all the way out up to the, um, it all goes all the way up to using our nine and a half by 14 hoop. I'm not that? sure if we have this one in stock right now, but we do have the regular cinch bag that's for Christmas, and I think it's actually over on that table over there when you come in the door, that it's the same kind of pro um, process. So if you want to get ready for Christmas now, because, you know, why wait until till the very end? We actually have the It's a Cinch Gift Bags Volume 2 Christmas Edition, the process is done exactly the same thing, making the casing and the buttonholes, and you get all of these really cute designs. And it goes up to a jumbo size 9 by 14 bag. So from a 4x4 four four all the way up to a 9x14. So that's a pretty significant bag to, to put some of goodies in some goodies in. So we have this, this is normally $29.95 for our Embroidery Expo. It's 15% off with the um, online, the online um, coupon code. You coupon can, code. You can come in and just buy it. Oh, for yes. 15%. Of mm -hmm. course. Okay. So now that we have done that, let's go ahead and pull our hoop off the machine and this time we actually get to pull 
the um, pull it out of our hoop. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Take all our Kimberbell tape off. And we have to love our Kimberbell tape because it comes off so nicely. Okay, and you are going to actually pull off the Kimberbell tape that was in the center. And notice how nicely it perforates from your stitch line without hurting your stitches. And sometimes if I know I'm going to be doing a bunch of these, I just reuse my Kimberbell tape, but I've got it stuck on my nails. Okay, so with that done, what we're going to do now is I am going to take my scissors and I have my regular sewing scissors and I also have a pair of pinking chairs you do not need a pair of pinking shears, but if you do, it's nice because on this step right here, we actually have to nip all the way around our bunny ears so that the fabric lays nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to go ahead and use my pinking shears because I got them for Christmas and why not? And I'm going to stop right here at the edge of my little casing and I'm going to just go in Oops, and let me get my trash can over here so I can just dump my stuff into the trash can. And what I did was I'm just leaving my, my casing open so that it lays inside inside my my hoop I mean inside my my little project and now I'm going to take my pinking shears back and leaving about a quarter of an inch from the edge I'm just going all the way around and when I get down to the bottom here I'm only going to go in to right about there where I'm not actually nipping I'm going to nip my threads and there is a lot of fabric here so just so that you know Okay, so let's go ahead and take my regular shears, cut this off, and toss that in the trash, and then let's get my, my excess stabilizer off, and then go into here. Hold it to the side so that I don't accidentally nip it off. Okay, <clears throat> so now that we're down here, we are going to go ahead and I'm just going to take my regular scissors and let me see. Oh, let's see if you can see it better on this side. See where the stitching line started and ended right here? I'm just going to take my, I'm going to leave about this much on, like so. And I like to make a pair of wings because then it stays inside my little bag better. Let's go ahead and cut it off here. And two here. Okay. Now notice that here's the here's the hole for being open. 
Here is the actual background fabric, but all of this fabric right here, we don't need. So we're just going to go ahead and cut that off because we don't need that bulk in there. So now that's done. And now I'm going to actually kind of take some of this excess out of here as well so that your corner lays a little nicer. Okay. All right. Now that we have all that, you can do the same thing with these little little edges over here. Notice that there's Okay. So you've got holes in here and we're going to leave all these materials. You don't want to cut these. The only one you can cut if you want to get rid of it is just the stabilizer one. Because the rest of them we need for the casing on both the front of the, the bunny and the back of the bunny. So I don't want you to accidentally cut that off. Okay, so with that let's get your little point turner and so if you have a point turner, all we're going to do is, I should have had that on, but I like to kind of just set the seams. It kind of relaxes the stitches. And now we're just going to turn Mr. Bunny right side out. This is probably the hardest part of the whole project. The larger your, your project, the easier it is to turn it. But we're going to go ahead and put my point turner in here to get our corners nice and turned. And we're going to get our bunny ear. Come on, Mr. Bunny Ear, let's get out of here. Okay, now I'm, I'm turning my point turner the other way because this is a rounded edge, so I don't want my the tip of my point turner to go through the fabric, so I just turned it around. There we go. Okay, so then notice that with having those little wings, these just slide right in here really nicely. And you can take um, either a slip stitch and sew it closed. You can take the fabric glue and just glue it closed. You can um, take Sema Steam and just lay a piece in there and steam it closed. But I just want to... Oh, you know what I did forget to tell you? At the very bottom, let us let me pull this back out for you, Tim, just really quickly. Okay, right here at the bottom where the two ears meet, and I am so sorry, but right there at the bottom, you should have where I didn't take my... my um, pinking shears all the way down. See right here? Can you see it right there? What you should do is take your regular scissors, go down to the bottom, and then kind of into each corner. But be really careful that you don't, you don't cut those threads. Now notice when I pull the bunny ears back out, it's going to see how it's, when I had it out before, it wasn't having a nice, a nice seam around that. Now it's fine. Okay, so I'm just going to, you'd play with that, press it, press this in, and don't freak out because when you look at this, you go, oh my gosh, Melody, where is the face? You just flip it one more time, and Mr. Bunny's face 
is now on the outside. So you'd press him. I'm just going to set him aside because I have one over here that's done. And what I wanted to show you was the little method of using um, shish kebab skewers and say that twice really fast. So what I have done is I have two different color of ribbon just so it makes it easy for you to see. If you look at this one, you can't really tell what I'm trying to tell you here. So I've cut two different threads or two different ribbons. I'm going to take one of my my shish kebab skewers and a little piece of Kimberbell tape and when I say little I just mean a little piece and I'm going to just take my skewer and I'm going to just wrap this around one of the skewers. It doesn't matter which one you choose. And, but whatever you choose, then you're going to just pull him through just like that and he comes right out the other side. Piece of cake, right? Now you're going to take one of the color of, of your ribbon, one of your pieces of ribbon. I'm going to choose the the gray one for right now and I am just going to tape my gray ribbon onto this skewer and now without pulling this one out okay I am just going to pull my pull the gray ribbon through the back of my my little so one guy. of the skewers was in the back of and the one bag of and what was in in the front. Okay. Okay. And now I'm going to just tie a knot in this side. Sometimes um, having acrylic nails is not the best thing. Okay. So we're going to just tie a knot. Sure. Okay, so that one's done. Okay, so now we have this one. So this side of our, our ribbon needs to go through the other side. And it's kind of hard to show you that if both ribbons are the same color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my shish kebab, my skewer. I'm going to just slide it back through my the back of my casing and if you're having a problem getting the casing open you could just put your second skewer in and then just have it slide right up and there it is and sometimes it's easier if you put the non pointed side through okay so now all I'm going to do is slide my little guy back in. Okay, so now I've got it, got it slid through. And we know that this is the side that needs to get knotted on our left-hand side. So we're just going to take a piece of our, our Kimberbell tape really quick. But no, just hold it down so that it doesn't slide off, and then you just pull them through. So he comes down to this side, and there we go. Pull them off, and then tie them off. So all you have to do is, if you want, just cinch them up a little bit so it gives you a little bit more room. I just wanted to show you in two different colors because I just think it's easier to show you how it works. And then, then what I do is I just tie him 
to the back. So now this one here that we made here, it has both the same colors. So, but you, you get the idea now that with the little skewers, you just need to know which ones you're pulling through. Um, so that is this month's project. Next month's project, we're making this really cute little um, pin cushion. So that's our project for next month. And hopefully we'll see you back here next month. Hopefully next month, um, California will have us open so that we can have a few people in our classroom. Um, but we will still be doing the online sessions just in case you can't a get a um, seat in our classroom because we have a minimum or a maximum actually of six people per class <clears throat> but if you're still not feeling up to coming out into public yet we'll still be having our online sessions anything else we need to tell them about Kent Tim mm -mm. okay very good. well then we'll see you next month thanks yeah.